Hi, and welcome back to Advanced Excel Training. We're going through all the topics you need to know for the MRS Excel Expert Exam. Remember to hit the like button and to subscribe for more awesome Advanced Excel Training videos. In this video, we'll be going through Objective 3.3, Advanced Date and Time Functions. We'll be having a look at the Now and Today function, the Date and Time function, the Weekday function, the Workday function, and the Net Workdays function. Let's get started. You can use the Date and Time function in Excel to convert dates and times to serial numbers and then perform calculations with those numbers. Excel uses serial numbers to represent a specific date and time. For example, we can see the time and date serial numbers in column C if we change the cell format to numbers. It begins with the 1st of January, 1900, as the starting date, and then counts the number of days that have passed since then to get the serial number. Excel expresses time as a decimal fraction in the 24-hour day. It returns a number between 0 and 1 to get a time serial number. The starting point is midnight, which is given the value of 0. If you combine the date and time serial numbers, it will return a time on a specific day. The advantage of using serial numbers in this way is it makes calculating dates and times easier and is a great way to track dates in your worksheet. For example, if we enter the today function into cell B15, it returns today's date. The today function is a dynamic function that does not always return the same value. Each time you edit the formula, recalculate the worksheet, or reopen your workbook, the today function updates its value to the current date. You can also use the current time in a formula if you use the now function. This function returns the current time with the current date. For example, if you enter the now function into cell B16, it will return the date and the current time. If you want only the time component, you can subtract the today function from the now function. The formula will then return only the current time. Now let's look at the date and time functions. The date and time functions return a valid date or time. You can use numbers that represent a specific day month or year to create a valid date in Excel. The date consists of three components, the year, the month and the day. You may have a worksheet that generates one or more of these components and you may need some way of building a proper date out of them. For example, we can enter the date function into cell E4. We can then insert the year, the month, and the day into the formula. Excel will then combine them to return a valid date. The date function will also adjust for incorrect month and date values. For example, the expression the 32nd of December 2018 will return the date the 1st of January 2019. This is because the date function added an extra day due to the fact that there is only 31 days in December. We can also use this function to add years to our date. We're going to plus 10. Months to our date. We're going to plus 6. And days to the date. And we're going to plus 3. Excel will now return our new date. The year, month and day components can also be extracted individually from a specific date. You can extract the date component using the year, month, and day functions. For example, in cell I4, you can add the year function and then reference the cell H4. Excel will then extract the year from the date. Then, in cell J4, you can use the month function and you can reference the cell H4 to extract the month. And lastly, in cell K4, you can use the day function and reference cell H4 to extract the day. 
Now let's have a look at the time function. The time consists of three components, the hour, the minute, and the second. If you have a worksheet that generates one or more of these components, you can build the time using the time function. For example, you can add the time function to cell E9 and then add the hour, the minute, and then the second. Excel will then return the time. Like the date function, the time function adjusts for incorrect hours, minutes, and seconds. For example, the time 13, 62, 25 returns 2.02.25 p.m. Here the time takes the extra minute and adds it to the hour value. You can also add extra hours, minutes, and seconds to your time value. For example, we can add an extra 2 hours, 10 minutes, and an extra 60 seconds to our time. The three components of time, being the hour, minute and second, can also be extracted individually using the hour, minute and second functions. You can extract the hour component using the hour function in cell I9 and referencing cell H9. Excel will then display the hour. In cell J9, you can add the minute function to extract the minute. And lastly, you can extract the second component using the seconds function. OK, now let's look at the weekday function. The weekday function returns the number that corresponds to the day of the week upon which the date falls. For example, we can add the weekday function to cell D5. We must then add the date component and then choose which day we want the weekday to start with. I will choose one to represent Sunday. We can then see that the function weekday 1 January 1900 return the number one because the date falls on a Sunday, which is the first day of the week. Using slash fall, we can find the rest of the days of the week. And we can see my birthday was on a Friday, which is the sixth day of the week. And New Year's Day will fall on a Tuesday next year. Next, let's look at the workday function. The workday function returns the number of working days between two dates. You can quite easily calculate the difference between two dates by subtracting one date from another. However, the result includes the weekends and holidays. In many business situations, you'll need to know the number of working days between two dates. To calculate the number of working days from the start date with the weekends and the holidays excluded, we can use the workday function. For example, here we see that Candy Stardust made a purchase on the 11th of February 2018. She needs to pay her account within 30 working days. To work out which date she must pay her account on, we can use the workday function. To insert the workdays function into a formula, on the formulas tab in the functions library group, click date and time, and then click the workdays function. In the start date, we can reference B5 and then add 30 days. We can now see she was supposed to pay her account on the 23rd of March 2018. We can determine the other payment dates by using flash full. Lastly, let's look at the net workdays function. To calculate the number of working days between two dates, you can use the net workdays function. In this example, we have already determined the date the client needed to pay their account by. Now we want to determine how many days late they are so that we can send them a reminder to pay their account. To insert the net working days function into a formula, on the formulas tab in the functions library group, click date and time 
and then click the Network Days function. In the start date, you can reference cell C5 and the end date, reference cell B2. You can press F4 to create an absolute reference because we'll be copying the formula down. We can now see that Candy Stardust is 25 days late on paying her account. And we can use Flashball to determine the rest. Wow, can you believe you can do so much with dates? I hope you have a better understanding of these date functions and I hope you find them useful. In the next video, we'll learn how to import, transform and combine data using query and combine worksheet data using the consolidate function. Thank you for watching another video brought to you by Advanced Excel Training. Remember to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe to the channel for more awesome Advanced Excel Training videos. I'm Deborah Gray. Until next time, happy Advanced Excel Training.